I think we should put a spoiler alert. Many of you might have watched this uh, new film which is quite a rage across India called Kantara and not just India. I've actually been on YouTube and searched Kantara reviews and many of these reviews are by foreigners. Some of them sitting in America, some sitting in Sweden even and everyone loves this movie. But it's uh, got into a bit of a controversy in the last few days and even before that actually. And uh, uh, it's been compared to a horror film which came out a few years, few years ago, I haven't watched it, called Tumbad, which was also very popular at that time. And the director of Tumbad has said that Kantara is nothing like Tumbad. That was a critique of or against the toxic masculinity and uh, uh, parochialism that Kantara celebrates. And again, we are back with Trina. Tuna, you watched the movie as well. Yeah, I watched it yesterday. And uh, uh, the director of Tumbad said that it's got toxic masculinity. And to me, when I watched it, and I, 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 I'm actually going to hold my views on it because as uh, someone who's not a man, <laughs> <laughs> I would want you to. Yeah, I mean, I can keep claiming that I'm not masculine, but people as I, you have a yeah. certain view. So did you find it toxic? Have... Um, I think the thing is that, uh, of course, there are elements of this, you know, very macho personality of the hero and all of that. But if you look at s cinema in general and specifically cinema from the South, like mm. I haven't watched that much cinema from the South, so I will, I can't really comment on it. But I've spoken to people like, for example, my sister who watches a lot of Southern cinema. Mm. This is not out of the ordinary, like the mm. hero being very macho and having this sort of, you know, like very hyper masculine personality is something we see in cinema. We've seen it a lot in our own Bollywood cinema. Yeah. We've seen it and especially through because this movie is set in the 90s. So yeah. I think that's important to remember mm -hmm. because especially if we look at Bollywood cinema, even through like the 70s, 80s, 90s, mm. even the Bollywood hero has always been a very macho man. Hmm. So I don't think there was anything extraordinarily toxic masculine about it. Hmm. Um, in fact, for example, like there are scenes where, you know, like one scene which is being called out is where he goes and pinches this girl. Yeah. Of course, that's very, very problematic. Hmm. But I think we also need to uh, realize that that may be very close to reality. I mean, this hmm. may be what is actually happening. Hmm. So just because something looks problematic, we can't just take it out of a story we are telling which is set in a specific time where that is in fact but, what but is happening. Uh, let me be the devil's advocate here. And yeah. I, I agree to a large extent with what you're saying here. But let me be the devil's advocate. You could still display that setting without yeah. necessarily him having to go and do that thing, right? To go and pinch the waist yeah. of the heroine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not, I, I personally, like, I'm not a big fan of that scene. Yeah. But what I think is that it may... Would you say it kind of sets the character in a certain sense? It. Yeah, it does. It does. Because that is how the character of this guy, Shiva, is made. Hmm. Who is this, you know, like, very um, sort of, I don't know, I can't think of a word for it. But, like, this very boyish... And Charm he has, very impulsive, yeah. he does mm. whatever, like, with respect to this woman, but even mm. with respect to, like, he, you see him getting into fights, you know, mm. he acts on a whim on mm. everything. So mm. I think that's part of the character that is shown as mm. well. Obviously, it's not okay. I mean, if you think about it in terms of whether it's okay to go do that, of course it's not. Mm. Mm. But we, we can't only be showing th things on screen that are okay, because there yeah. are a lot of things which are not okay, but they do continue to happen in society. So how do you mm. depict reality mm. without showing some of those things. And much of Bollywood was like that. Yeah, throughout. exactly. That's and it. I think even in this movie, for example, uh, because even the women, mm. because like, for example, his mother, mm. she calls him out on uh, his bullshit a lot. Like you yeah. see her always, you know, running after him, even mm. when there is a scene where he, you know, pushes this woman away mm -hmm. and the mother immediately comes and yeah, sort of slaps him yeah, and says, yeah. how dare you? How dare you? This is not yeah. how I've raised you and all. Mm -hmm. So, Sure, there is masculinity, but mm. it's not like they've shown it in a way where it's glorified. At least that's not what I would say. They have shown mm. a counter to it also where this person is being, you know, 
reprimanded for behaving in that mm. way. But you know, one could also argue that this is this fits into a very typical thing where the uh, son, who's in in some ways a no good kind of a person, yeah. right? And never do well. He drinks uh, alcohol yeah. all the time. He's always looking for some kind of meat to eat, yeah. right? and he's a bit of a glutton. Thinks about food. Gets into fights all the time, yeah. and uh, and clearly is also sh uh, shown probably smoking marijuana. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's not very clear, but we can you can make yeah. out that his he goes mm -hmm. into this kind of a daze, and that the man who gives it to him, yeah. right, uh, is clearly always in this daze. Yeah. He speaks in this kind of a situation where probably they're stoned. Right? Yeah. So this character is being set up in a certain sense as being. A bit of a lout, right? Mm -hmm. He fights, he, and uh, right in the beginning, when he's gone and asks for the medal, he gets the medal. He's given a lot of the, all his friends. Yeah. They're also like him. They yeah. all get these bottles of alcohol and they yeah. go away. And he overhears two women walking past saying that one of them says, My son is getting spoiled by this Shiva, yeah. right? Yeah. So Shiva is clearly the. And right at the beginning, those two people talking, Shiva is a black sheep, not only of the family, but, but of the, the village, village itself. Yeah. And in some senses, I mean, if one had to say that that is itself the story, right? Yeah. Here is a person who is a bit gullible. Mm. He is a bit of a gunda, yeah. right? He is uh, violent, aggressive, but at the same time, he does not really see the diff right from wrong, mm. right? And there is a turning point at one point when he changes. Yeah. Right? And maybe that is itself a thing to be set up, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but perhaps, right? Yeah. In hindsight, the director probably would think, unless they've actually tried to say, this is what it is, hmm. right? And this is what it was. And even now, this is what it courtship is in, let's say, among... Uh, the working classes or the poor that yeah. is how it and we should not bring our uh, you know rational modern sensibilities about romance into that yeah. right? necessarily because that is how it unfolds yeah. and so that is the thing I think we should revisit whether there is an anti-modern voice speaking in this movie I'm not saying necessarily that's bad or yeah. good but I'm just saying that so there is there is no doubt that this man is being set up as a very masculine character, very macho character who not only fights with everyone, but also fights with the representative of the state. Yeah. Right? When the, the forest officer yeah. comes, right? Yeah. And uh, he is shown as both, again, the forest officer also has a certain machismo there. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, right? for sure, yeah. And right? he's shown to be very rugged, right? often unkempt, unshaved. Yeah. And he, uh, right at the beginning when these two uh, villagers uh, go and say that, oh, we've killed one wild boar, so it's small, so the meat is less. And then he beats them. And, yeah. and there is, I think, a very, um, the film is very sensitive to reality hmm. rather than an imagined kind of thing, right? So an upright officer who is upholding the rule of law and representing the state yeah. is also uh, not necessarily good. Yeah. Right? yeah. Whereas there are these his seniors who come. Hmm. Right? They are much more practical. Yeah. They say, don't do this. Do this, do this. The Adivasis will go against us. This will become a problem. Yeah. Right? Um, so that what, did at any point did you feel uncomfortable while watching the film and I, I, I that is i think the question because i yeah. i really liked the film i was yeah. greatly i greatly enjoyed it but then i also like films in which you know old hindi films in which the villain gets beaten badly yeah. and stuff like that yeah. and like i like the way in which it's set up for the villain to be really cruel and winning till the last second and then you feel the urge to actually take revenge as a viewer right yeah did any point in this film make you feel uncomfortable? And also, what are the points in the movie? Because I don't know, we shouldn't give away any spoilers for those who haven't watched, but those who have watched, they'll understand. Which are the points in the movie when you felt like 
exhilarated or felt yes or felt a lot of you know I was I don't know whether one could call it joy but felt that, that identity energy, yeah. yeah energy yeah I mean definitely one of the parts would be the end sequence but mm. again I don't want to say too much about it yeah, and okay. give it away yeah but the trans the transition that happens mm. towards the end sequence and mm. also the way it's been shot and yeah. made mm. Mm. Uh, it's it's a fight but it's also a dance yeah like yeah. so the way mm. it's been done I thought was mm. extremely good even in mm. fact like I am not someone who enjoys action cinema mm. at all mm. uh, but I feel most of the action sequences so you don't watch the Avengers and stuff like that no I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel that most of the action bits in this movie mm. have also been uh, like I said it's always sort of a dance mm, yeah. like the way it's been mm. shot like mm. for example the first sequence after mm. uh, the buffalo fight, uh, race, race thing yeah. even mm. in that mud when they're mm. having a fight mm. and you see those shots you know from the mm. top where mm. the water is splashing mm. it's it's almost if you see that in isolation mm. it's almost hard to figure out if mm. this is a fight that's going on or mm. well, some I mean, sort you know, of that would probably bring take you back to the Hong Kong movies because mm. those are the ones where the people are put up in wires and the fight sequences yeah. are often very choreographed. They're almost dance-like. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right, and you know? again, that's something mm. I think in Southern cinema which has always yeah. been there where the fight yeah. sequences are never meant to look very realistic. Yeah, yeah they're not meant to be. <laughs> because right. actually, yeah. if you see two men fighting, it's mm. not going to look that uh, yeah. <laughs> well done. But no. over here, you know, mm. there's always like, there's a leap and then... Yeah. You hit someone. They're all wired up and when they kick the man, each person exactly. goes flying back. And you do back. like a backflip yeah, and yeah. you land on yeah. someone's head or something yeah. of that sort. Yeah. So, but the last sequence, without giving away yeah. what it is, I think the last scene is, is remarkable because it, wh whoever has watched any kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, dance, which is, which has certain amounts of tribal elements, hmm. right? Whether it is, uh, whether it is Yakshagan, which mm. emerges out of that kind of space, or even um, dances that you see from Africa, mm. right? there is that m uh, method used. It's been, it's kind of sitting on that, and it's interesting because the director, actor Rishabh Shetty, I think, was a Yakshagan performer. Oh, really? I don't know. So he emerged out of the Yakshagan tradition. So he knows it, <coughs> and the location. Is actually all the shot somewhere else probably, but the name of that place is his village, okay. his real village where he grew up. Okay. Right. So perhaps he knows. Yeah. What it is, and I read a little bit about the background of how that movie was shot, and uh, they wanted to kind of understand what people wore and the what is the kind of clothes they mm. wore and uh, what is the so the costumes they did was by speaking to the local to Adivasi. The and they, yeah, even went, I read that. Yeah. They went and spoke to people. Uh, what do they, what they eat. Yeah. So it's an, this kind of brings us to another part, right? Yeah. Which I think is a crucial thing to look at. Now, again, since the movie right at the beginning is set up for you to understand what this film is about, right? It, right at the beginning, there is this king yeah. who is obviously should be happy. Yeah. He has riches, he has a family, um, he has a child, but he cannot sleep, he's not happy, he has no peace. Yeah. And he is sent out to look for peace. And he tries all methods, but he can't till he happens to be in the forest and he sees these stones, yeah. which are obviously the idol. And it's a kind of a rudimentary representation yeah. of the idol. And he turns around and he feels peace. Instantly, right? yeah. And in that scene, you can see that it's been done in a certain way because it's raining. Yeah. And he instantly feels that peace and it's inside a forest and he turns to see these uh, local people and yeah. we don't know who they are yeah. right because we don't know whether they have a village right? mm. perhaps they're forest dwellers the yeah. Adivasis right mm. and uh, he asks for the stone that he wants to take it back to the palace and they say no you can't because this is our mm. uh, god yeah. right? Panjurli Deva which is yeah. interestingly and this might be an important thing mm. translated as demi god which is not yeah. In the super, in the uh, in the subtitle, it's, yeah. you see it as demigod, our demigod. Yeah. And demigod, by definition, is not full fledged god, right? Demigod yeah. is a lower god. Yeah. Right? Has power, 
and might even be a human being who has certain amounts of power, right? Hmm. So it's a demigod, Panjurli Deva, and he says, okay, and, and then we see immediately Panjurli uh, possessing one of these people and speaking. Yeah. Right? So it's set up for us that Panjurli can speak hmm. and says that, yes, you can take me with you, but you give all the land till which my, where my voice, voice reaches reach, yeah. and give it to these people. Hmm. Right? So in that sense, it's probably setting up the village from that moment. And he says, yes. And then Panjurli warns him yeah. that I may forgive, if you go back on your word, I may forgive you, hmm. but my, uh, what should one say, my partner, right? hmm. uh, Guliga hmm. will not. Right? Yeah. So, Guliga is a ferocious thing and if you do a little bit of Google search, you see Panjurli and Guliga are represented, Guliga is represented with, I think, mud or black mm. paint on the face yeah. and is a more ferocious, yeah. and then Panjurli with yellow paint. Yeah. So, you see, and the king takes it, goes back, gives them the land and till for more than a hundred years, because this is, starts in sometime in the 1850s and yeah. in 1970 or something. Yeah. One of his descendants wants the land back, yeah. goes to court and is warned by the Bhutakola performer through whom Panjurli speaks yeah. that you will learn a lesson on the steps of the court. So he dies with yeah. blood coming out of his mouth yeah. on the steps of the court and that is how it is set up. Yeah. Now, when you watch it, you kind of already know what this film is about. It's, it's about that... Riches cannot get you peace. Hmm. Peace comes when you share with people. Yeah. Right? Uh, the Panjurli is in a sense nature because yeah. he's deep in a forest. Yeah. Right? The spirit of nature can be benevolent, hmm. right? Yeah. Give you peace. But also, if you violate nature, then nature has a destructive side, yeah. which is Gulega. And it's only this. When you come to a balance between what you take from nature yeah. and what you give to nature, right, is uh, is when you can have peace and that is the balance, right? Mm. And so, rest of the story you know is going to be something like that because otherwise, and and when you see that the Bhutakola performer, mm. right, and is going with his wife and child, right, yeah. child who becomes Shiva yeah. later on. He says that what we don't understand is that this is not ours, hmm. right? This is nature's, so, yeah. right? So you see that, okay, and as you watch the movie, you feel that there's a very progressive message here, hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, what, what message do you take out of it? Uh, I mean, like you said, one, one of the messages that's there is about this relationship and balance between human and nature hmm. uh, that's one aspect of it but of course it's also about ownership of land yeah right because there's this there's this constant tussle between three parties which is hmm. the state the what they call the landlord towards the end which is yeah. descendants yeah. of the king yeah. who had given the land hmm. uh, and the people who actually live there hmm. so it's also about greed from the landlord hmm. To sort of take that land back because you feel a sense of entitlement. And by cheating them. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Because there's a sense of entitlement that mm. I, like my ancestors had given this away. Mm. So now it's mine to take. And and there's also a, a thing that you realize that he's, he, he's doing it because there's a survey team which is going to come and write down yeah. who has what land. And... He tries to cheat the villagers. Yeah, he villagers. tricks them into, like, uh, he pretends to be their saviour. Yeah. And through that tricks them into sort Giving of handing up their the land, land over to back him. Back to him. So that yeah. when the survey happens, and this is also an interesting thing, it's a very subtly put yeah. thing, because the land rights actually come into existence only when the state surveys it yeah. and puts it on record, right? Exactly. Because then, like, for example, there are so many scenes before that, before mm. when they're talking about how the survey might happen. Yeah. And the landlord's lawyer, I think, mm. is there. Mm. And they're asking people for their paperwork. And you realize that most of the people have no actual paperwork, paperwork yeah. for the land, which is actually theirs. And one of them actually comes and asks for rice, thinks that this yeah. is they're going to, this yeah. is a ration. Exactly. So he says, why have you got your ration card? Do I look like the ration shop? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you see that actually no one has any kind of actual uh, document, document to prove that, prove this, is that just this is their land. Yet it has been their land for years and years. And so. if you remember, there's a scene where the, the 
forest officer stops these people coming out of the forest carrying mm. sticks and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And uh, he stops them and says that, have you taken permission? Yeah. And they said, why do we need Who's permission? permission? Yeah. Right? He says, yes, you need the government's permission to take th things from the forest. Is this your, do you think it's your ancestor's property? Yeah. Right? And that is when Shiva and his friends yeah. come and they said, no, 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 no permission will be required. Right? This is ours. Yeah. And the forest officer tells him that the, this is the government's. Hmm. And he says that we have been around before your government came into existence. Yeah, right? exactly. So, in a sense that if you look at it, uh, it puts on, uh, it kind of acknowledges certain issues which I don't think any other mainstream cinema ever even touches upon. Yeah. I mean, we would have seen these I things can... in NFD, you wouldn't have, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in the old days of Doordarshan, NFDC movies made what would be called art house parallel cinema, hmm. would touch upon it. Yeah. And it would have a very conscious, non-commercial yeah. approach to it. Whereas this is an out and out commercial, commercial cinema, yeah. but its themes are exactly what we would have seen in the 80s, yeah. right? In uh, so-called art house films, right? Yeah. The art films that Doordarshan showed, which wouldn't yeah. actually find takers in cinema theaters. Yeah. Um, so that brings me to a question that, right? you know, uh, and I want you to kind of uh, respond to it. Hmm. That in the end, we see that the landlord is killed and the land does not go to him. Right? And there is some kind of a rapprochement. We reveal the end after saying we are not going to reveal it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> if you haven't watched this, too bad for you. Yeah. You, you know, there are some spoilers you can't do anything about. Yeah. And I'm sure that... The fact that the landlord is going to come to some kind of a bad end yeah. is, will be known to everyone. Right? That's true. And, uh, actually, we revealed a lot. Yeah. But too bad. I think that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we should put a spoiler alert right yeah, at the yeah, beginning. Yeah. There will be some spoilers. If you don't want to watch this, we'll let you know right at the beginning after yeah. this recording is taken. place. Okay. So, uh, what I'm saying is, but let's not give anything away. <laughs> <laughs> so, we see that there's some sort of a alliance between hmm. the forest officer who understands them and yeah. and he comes to their rescue. Right? Yeah. Uh, what did you feel about that solution? Mm. I'm actually unsure of what, what I made of it. Mm -hmm. It was interesting because this is the same guy who from the beginning has very clearly been set up as a villain. Yeah. I mean, it's not that you interpret him as, as the villain, but the mm. way he's presented is yeah. very mm. clear that this is supposed to be the villain. Yeah. Um, it was interesting also because you do realize that this guy is just doing, like we discussed, is just doing mm. his job. Mm. So in that sense, that alliance to some extent makes sense. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about how I felt about it. So to come to your earlier question, when mm. you asked me if there was anything that made me, like any point, huh? yeah. so I wouldn't say it made me uncomfortable, mm. but it made me unsure. Mm. This, the, this, kind, this end where these two parties sort of come together mm. to defeat the landlord or whatever, mm. it didn't make me uncomfortable, but it did make me unsure of how I feel about this kind of settlement. Because like we said, the rest of the film, uh, there were a lot of, uh, like themes and stuff which were based in reality. Mm. I think this alliance is not is something I was not convinced by. Yeah. Like in the sense that this felt like this, like a yeah. like a, a compromise. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Probably a compromise for the censors. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know for whoever. <laughs> yeah. But to me, I think that what maybe and it is, it is interesting that a good film in that sense, and that is why this is a good movie, is whether you like it, do you yeah. like the solution or not, right? Yeah. A good film is that something that makes you think later as well, right? When we were discussing that, yeah. I think we should do a, discuss, a chat on this as a yeah. show, right? Uh, I mean, we're not doing it about Raja Babu, although I have a lot <laughs> to say about it. Right? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but when we... I think that I felt uncomfortable and hmm. dissatisfied with the solution. Hmm. And later on, the more I thought about it, the more I saw the symbolism there, 
I felt in some ways that it was politically regressive. And I'll say why. Hmm. I think that there are two parts to it. One is that it, and I'll go back to the idea of the demigod. Hmm. Right? They don't say, and maybe that's an English translation and that's the difficulty here. Yeah. Right? Uh, that I'm not watching it. I don't know what yeah. uh, a native Kannad viewer would say about it. Yeah. See, uh, say about it. Uh, Hear it, and I think there's nothing called Kannad, maybe Kannada. Yeah, Kannada. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> that already reveals. <laughs> so, uh, when the conscious way of saying it as demigod says that there's a greater Hindu tradition. Yeah. Right? And these are smaller traditions within that Hindu tradition. Right? Yeah. Whereas historically, there's always been a conflict. Hmm. Right? It's not been that easy an assimilation between local. Religious yeah. beliefs, some of which would be seen as going against what yeah. mainstream, you know, dominant Hindu tradition is. Yeah. And uh, I saw that there was some criticism of the usage of the Om symbol within the... Yeah. I mean, again, I, I don't know whether that already exists in the, hmm. in the local no, tradition. No, there was also some other... Uh, with respect to this uh, aspect of Hinduism entering the... Because... Uh, so, for example, uh, the director said something about that, you know, how this Bhutakola has been part of Hindu culture for a long time and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Mm. Uh, but there was this other actor called, I think, Chetan Kumar, mm. who tweeted something about it. And he said that, and it was a, I mean, he wasn't being, he wasn't trolling it or trashing mm. the film mm. or anything. He said that it's great to see uh, uh, one of our movies making national and international waves and blah, blah, mm. blah. But it is... Uh, important to recognize uh, it is important to note that Bhutakola is not Hindu it has it is a practice of the Adivasis and it has existed long before this and it has been now so is it, it it's worth uh, actually exploring I, I'm yeah. interested in looking at it and seeing yeah. what it means and you know historically this has been always spoken of the great tradition and little tradition yeah. and how uh, local cults many small mother goddess cults have got incorporated and made into one big deity, deity yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, I see that there is not necessarily a conscious attempt. Maybe that is how Rishabh Shetty sees it. Right? Yeah. Hmm? The uh, positioning of the Om in the middle yeah. of that title, Kantara, and it comes and... Uh, but at the same time, and I'm not saying this, this is a very straightforward thing, but I'm saying it's a very complex way in which the movie actually deals with it and establishes it because you see meat eating, a lot of meat eating, yeah. right? Drinking, right? It's not a puritanical yeah. religious family. And that to meat being bore, which is yeah, used, bore, yeah, which yeah, is not yeah. something even in like Hindu, yeah. upper caste Hindu cultures, mm. pork is considered yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Maybe that is a play on the yeah. idea of the Bhutakola performer being the Varaha. Maybe yeah. that is what... And also there close uh, relationship with the um, with the forest and how they live off the forest so drinking meat eating yeah he comes and says that there's no fish yeah why is no so it's a very aggressively establishing non vegetarianism as a yeah. way of life right yeah. and that uh, uh, i, I so it's a complex way in it but overall to me it sent it seemed like the local tradition has been assimilated into a larger tradition and it is being presented as that. Yeah. yeah. That this is what we are. And when we look at Adivasi assertion, uh, mm. their, um, their fight, struggles to have their own rights, which has often come, ag um, come up against the development state. Yeah. Right? And this is not new. This has happened for since independence yeah. or even before that. Right? And... The solution to that, to me, seems to be driven through not just, not community action, hmm. but by one hero. Huh. Right? Yeah. The hero who does it. Right? Hmm. Others are actually standing as supplicants and he kind of yeah. drives them to He's rise the up. He's the savior, yeah. He's the savior and he drives them to rise up against them. Yeah. There is, there is no team involved, hmm. right? Hmm. This is one man. Yeah. That's the overall sense. Of course, people will point out, no, everyone was fighting. There mm. were these women also fighting. But the point is that somewhere there was one man. And yeah. then the man actually can only fight back yeah. when 
a spirit hmm. right something supernatural comes yeah into. of course that could also be just an allegory it could be just yeah, the yeah. sense that he understands suddenly realizes the in, what it is all about right yeah so as i'm saying that i won't say that i accept that this is toxic masculinity or yeah. it is anti uh, you know you know anti modern and so on like i think that there is something progressive about it but at the yeah. same time yeah i think that the solutions there are, are to, yeah me leave me uncomfortable and in yeah. some ways it is it can be seen mm. as regressive and you could see that by the mm. huge A lot of people actually like the movie not for anything else but because the hero is so macho and he beats people up so brilliantly. Right? Yeah. It's almost as if this is no bit different from a Bahubali, which, by the way, I love as well. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen it. Oh my God! Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'll end by telling you the story about Bahubali. When um, it, Bahubali Two was released, there there was a thing that went on on. Twitter and all that. Katta pa ne Bahubali ko kyu maar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That I've seen. Yeah. And I remember anchoring, and there was a story on it, and I said, "What is this Katta pa?" Right? Yeah. And um, and they said, my co-anchor said, "You haven't seen Bahubali?" <laughs> I said, "No." So I went home and I switched on and I watched it on YouTube. Yeah. Bahubali because it was not available anywhere else at that time. And my wife was sitting there saying, "What is this you're watching?" <laughs> right? is terrible right yeah. and then slowly she also got dragged into it and she also watched it and then suddenly it says the next part <laughs> is in 2 years from now right <laughs> it leaves you hanging yeah. there is no cliffhanger like that i haven't thought of and luckily for us the next part was the next day oh. <laughs> so i immediately oh, so booked tickets because you watched it today yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we booked tickets and went and watched bahubali 2 the next day where well, you yeah. must watch it but what i'm saying the reason i said that is and maybe a lot of this is because it is that new interest in south indian movies they're doing very well yeah. they're very well produced yeah. very well the cinematography acting is really yeah. plus i think a big part is also what we said is that i think what a lot of these movies do well is bring up these kind of issues in mainstream cinema yes because mm. in bollywood there is a very clear distinction there's yeah. either mainstream cinema mm. or there's this like art or yeah. alternative cinema yeah. which mm. will deal with certain you know societal issues yeah. you very rarely see them mm. converge so and think, even those uh, issues are largely small town issues which will appear in some multiplexes and then come on prime ha exactly they're not blockbusters like exactly yeah yeah, mm. yeah. okay so Uh, you know maybe next time we should discuss raja babu and bahu ji <laughs> <laughs> so that's our chat today if you liked it do like press the like button even if you do not like it press the like button and uh, just one press uh, and do subscribe to our channel news click on youtube and then you'll get to know when a new video drops